Um, thank you. Now, I just want to start by saying thank you to Jin Dong for his uh, invitation to attend BLA. Um, this uh, presentation is about the annotation of uh, sample instrument region and objective uh, minimal model, minimal amount of information model for uh, discovering uh, experimental protocols. So basically what we are doing is that um, we are annotating a collection of protocols. Uh, we are manually annotate, annotating the collection of protocols. Um, so we are, because we want to support the development of an ontology um, for uh, the discovery of um, basically instruments, uh, regions, and samples in experimental protocols, we also want to validate the gas adherence rules that we have, have put together uh, so that we can support the automatic annotation of these kind of documents. Um, we were looking for a lot of uh, experiences that could make use, uh, that were making use of um, annotation to support uh, what we wanted to support, namely uh, the development of the ontology and the uh, validation of rules and gas theories, and we couldn't find match um, in the biomedical domain. There was some experience in news and things like that, but uh, biologists have been developing ontologies differently, basically as a, as a knowledge-intensive task, not, uh, not really supported by uh, semi-automatic methods. Um, so is, was it as easy as to say that uh, here is a tag, so therefore I have a new class in the ontology? It, it proved not to be that easy. Uh, by annotating the, by manual, manually annotating the uh, collection of documents, we ended up uh, building a, a, a gold standard uh, of um, experimental protocols, uh, manually annotated. And so what is an experimental protocol? An experimental protocol is pretty much like a cooking recipe. Basically, uh, all of experimental protocols have ingredients, um, have regions, have instruments. They detailed uh, the whole workflow, the execution of an experiment. Uh, they have a very uh, detailed list of instructions. But the problem is that um, the, uh, the structure of experimental protocols is not very well organized. So you have all of these uh, immersed in a very complex narrative. It may make sense for a human, but it, it's very hard to have the experimental protocol making sense for it for a machine. Um, so after analyzing um, a corpus of experimental protocols close to a, a 500 uh, experimental protocols, we started by discovering that uh, all of experimental protocols had samples, had instruments, had, had regions, and had, had objectives. Uh, independently from the domain, they all had these uh, four elements. Um, and by having those four elements, um, as a common as, as common data elements across our corpus of documents, we realized that we were dealing with a case that was similar uh, to the one posed by the PICO model, the uh, population intervention comparison and outcome model, widely used uh, as a model to frame queries in the clinical domain. So we thought, well, it makes sense to make use of this uh, of these uh, four common data elements in the same way as clinicians make use of this PICO model. So we came up with this. A CIRA model, a sample instrument region and objective. And because those are data elements that are common across all of the um, uh, experimental protocols that we were dealing with, we wondered how could we automatically recognize um, these uh, four elements. We thought it was going to be a simple task of name, name entity recognition. We thought it was going to be very easy, but it proved not to be very easy because the ontologies were, f were incomplete. Uh, the ontologies didn't really explicitly know what was an instrument and what was a region, and discovering the objective proved to, proved to be very, very difficult. Uh, however, we also saw that uh, the value in framing, being able to frame a question uh, using you know, this kind of minimal information model uh, was very uh, important because we could answer things like, for instance, what bacteria have been used in protocols for persistent cell isolation. And these are the kind of real queries that people in labs um, want to ask uh, when they are searching for uh, experimental protocols. Um, annotating zero uh, looks very much like this. So on the left-hand side of the screen, you have uh, the text as it comes from the actual um, paper or the actual uh, experimental protocol. And on the right hand, you have uh, the actual uh, zero model annotated. So as you can see, for instance, you see that uh, tumor tissue has been identified and once it is identified, we, we try to link it to external resources because we are generating linked data out of this uh, annotation exercise. Um, but you also can see that, for instance, stream into one, two, uh, one, one centimeter 
three fragments and immerse immediately in something freezing at minus 80 degrees, um, that's, a, that's an instruction. That's a much more difficult um, 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 structure to work with. So we focused on the, on, the, on the recognition of the sample, the instrument, and the region, and the, obje and the objective. And, and by doing that, we realized that we basically needed to uh, have comprehensive vocabularies. Um, so the general process that we are following is that we are having the, um, the text. We do some name entity recognition, some NLP. Uh, we uh, use uh, our vocabularies for, for this task. We generate linked data uh, whenever possible. We link up to uh, sources on the web. And by doing that, we kind of generate a knowledge base uh, where we can quite easily uh, support uh, the, 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 um, the, the um, confirmation of, of flexible queries. Like, for instance, give me the protocols used to isolate perinator cells uh, from the central nervous systems uh, for mice. Um, the challenge for us was um, how to um, have comprehensive vocabularies. Uh, and by comprehensive vocabularies, we realized that we needed to have uh, more people uh, contributing to the uh, extension of, uh, on, and characterization of the vocabulary. So we needed to harness the collective intelligence. And for doing that, we realized that uh, we need to realize the synergy between ontologies and folksonomies in, in, a, in a very knowledge-intensive environment. In other words, in simple and plain English, we needed to have the annotation as part of the ontology development process. Um, we, we started to work with um, people, uh, domain experts annotating documents over our annotation system. Our annotation system basically allows you to highlight a piece of the text. It allows you uh, to uh, shoot, choose an uh, attack, uh, sample, instrument, region, or objective. Um, and we started by training people, uh, our annotators, uh, into how to annotate, how to use the tool. Uh, we uh, started to have some uh, hosting some annotation sessions. We, as a reward, we were giving people some, some gift cards. And then we started to get this kind of, of graphics out of our annotation exercise. Um, I'm going to go very uh, briefly on this. We basically were calculating a, a coefficient of agreement so that we could know that this is exact. This 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 word is uh, really what this is about. Whether it's sample instrument or region. Um, when developing the ontology, you do usually you do some requirements, some design, some diffusion use. You evaluate and then you support the evolution and then you start managing. You, and when you have the needs, you have the design, you have the inclusion of the ontology, you start making use of that ontology, and then you have, uh, and then for in our specific case, the use was to retrieve, um, to, to use it as, as an information retrieval tool. And so for extraction of total RNA using this specific, um, this specific uh, region, uh, using this specific, uh, from this specific manufacturer, uh, in human tumor tissues. Um, and then we realized that um, the vocabularies that we were automatically getting from things like BioPortal were basically being evaluated or bedded against uh, the annotation of the, um, of the actual experimental protocols. So by annotating, we were actually evaluating and validating the ontology. And by doing that, we were supporting the evolution of the ontology. Um, and, and our crowd pretty much looks Looks at is is, is has um, like uh, thirty or forty domain experts. Uh, we are uh, our data process is as soon as we finish the annotation, we try to um, start analyzing, calculating the coefficient of agreement, and, and moving the, the ontology development process forward. Um, we have uh, annotated five hundred protocols manually. Uh, we have uh, identified something somewhere around three hundred thousand concept uh, concepts linked uh, to. Uh, resources like PubMed, Kedi, SNOMED, NCI, Saros, etc., etc., and we have over uh, 100,000 uh, own um, terms, meaning uh, terms that were not part of either of those ontologies. Um, we're basically what, what we want to do at the end of this is that uh, we want to have the repositories. We want to move from a tech-centric uh, repository of protocols into something more knowledge-based kind of thing. So. Again, so we want to support the kind of queries like uh, like I have just um, mentioned before. Uh, so for this, we, we want to validate our uh, linked data models, and we want to find uh, um, zero automatically, and compare that against our gate workflow, which is what we currently have. We, we use gate for uh, discovering zero automatically, and this is this is something that I started to work on last uh, year, but I couldn't finish that. I want to uh, have interoperability with pool annotation between 
my annotation system, which is built up on hypothesis, which is a very generic annotation system, and proof annotation. So that's, uh, thank you.